Good morning, venters. The truth is, it's afternoon. So I did a little video this morning, but it was so hot that I had to stop. But it was a silent video, so I still have that video. But I wanted to do one where I was obviously speaking to you guys. So I want to wish you guys a happy Sunday. I'm hoping that you guys are starting to feel what I'm saying when I tell you to take a morning walk before the football games start. So if the football games aren't going to start for 45 minutes or so, put your shoes on. You don't need to see the pregame that bad, do you? I mean, I know I would because I'm a football fan, but I take my walk before then. If you haven't taken it, go grab your cleats and get outside and get to walking. Guys, today we're going to have a special story time. This first story is about Stephanie's message in a bottle. I hope you like it. In a small town near Peoria, Illinois, a 150-year-old house was being restored when a construction worker discovered a hidden message in a bottle between the kitchen's walls. The note, written by a 14-year-old girl in 1975, went viral, sparking widespread interest in the life of the now 61-year-old woman. In Green Valley, carpenter Dakota Moan was repairing a fire-damaged home. While removing the walls in the front living room, he noticed something that read, Note, September 29th, 1975. 49 years ago today! This note had arrows pointing to a small notch in the wood. Inside, he found a message in the bottle. It was lost, but not at sea. He had it in his hands. The note was signed by Stephanie Heron one of railroad lineman Ernest Heron's five daughters. Steph later moved to New York City, took her husband's last name, Poit, has had five children, and she's happy to let everyone know that she taught inner city kids. I was shocked, absolutely shocked, she said when I heard about the note. Honestly, I forgot all about it. Life goes on, years go by. I can't believe how much this has struck people. I've gotten notes from people who remember me as a kid growing up in Green Valley. It was a great place to grow up. By the way, here's what the note said to whoever finds this. Today is September 29th, 1975. My name is Stephanie Heron. I live here with my mom, my dad, Becky and Valerie, my sisters. Gerald Ford is the president. Mrs. Lay, she's our neighbor. Mom is pregnant and the baby is due any day. As far as we know, this home was built in 1872. We're remodeling. The Illinois Central Railroad is on the west side of the home, and we've lived here for eight years. My dad works for the Chicago Northwestern Railroad. Green Valley has about 650 people in it. I'm 14, Val is 16, and my little sister, Becky, is 12. I hope you have lots of happiness in this house. Steph. Oh, and P.S. My mom's name is Rose Heron. She's a registered nurse. She works at Hopedale Nursing Home. She was born in Nebraska. She's a very good mother. Boyd explained that time capsules were popular back in 1975. Her family moved into the house built in 1872, which was next to a busy railroad. Already 100 years old when they moved in, the family constantly made additions to the home, including an enclosed porch which came into the kitchen slash living room where Dakota found the time capsule itself. Dakota, who described the note as the coolest thing he's ever found, is working with the home's new owner to build a shadow box into the wall where the note was found. They plan to leave notes of their own for future carpenters to find. Now, I don't know about you, but that's awesome. But the reason I, write, I read this letter to you guys is because I want YouTube to maintain the capsule portion of what YouTube is. YouTube is a time capsule. So if you agree with me, give this video a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments how much you enjoyed this story. Yes, Bob? Today's September 29th. I know, Bob, that's what makes that story all that much more magical. 
The reality is Stephanie is still alive and well. She's 61 years old. And if her and her mom had been walking this whole time, maybe her mom would still be with us. And her mom might still be with us. I don't know if her mom's out of here. But the reality is, if your mom is still around, she is an RN, we could use her for a school. Have her get in touch with me. I thought that story was really, really cool. So remember YouTube, whenever you uh, put up a video of somebody and make it hard to find, you're killing a time capsule that somebody's putting out there for the world to find. So I want you guys to thumbs up this video and I want you guys to leave a comment that basically says YouTube, quit getting rid of these older videos. They are pure gold. And speaking of gold, stick around. I've got a really fun story about a mummy that they found who had a tongue of gold. <laughs> this next story I think you're really going to like. So for the title of this next story, we're going to call it A Sorceress's Toolkit That Would Make P. Diddy Blush. Now that's kind of bullshit. I think if this sorceress came to nowadays, like if we brought her up with a time machine, she would look at what P. Diddy's doing and say, holy crap, I need to step up my game. So I hope you guys enjoy this. In Pompeii, archaeologists recently found a sorceress's toolkit in the ruins of a 150-year-old house. The toolkit included around 100 small objects like mirrors, tiny skulls, scarab beetles, bone carved items, and miniature phallic amulets. These items were likely used for fortune telling, predicting pregnancies, conducting fertility rites, and warding off bad luck. Pompeii General Director Massimo Osana mentioned that these objects reveal personal stories of the city's inhabitants who tried to escape the eruption. They also found a room with 10 victims, including women and children, and are using DNA analysis to establish kinship relationships. The toolkit might have belonged to one of these victims. The toolkit was discovered in the garden house in Regio 5, a luxurious via with highly sexualized friezes on the walls suggest the owner was not of high status and could have been a slave, as there were no gold or precious stones among the items. Osana speculated that the objects might have belonged to a Roman love doctor, but this is just a theory. The toolkit will soon be displayed in the Palestra Grande at the Pompeii site itself. It's fascinating that major discoveries are still being made here every day. I totally agree. I don't know if you guys think it's cool or not, but look at these items that they had. That is incredible. That is so cool. Stick around. We've got one more story of a mummy with a golden tongue. Now, let's be honest. Whenever they make discoveries, it's always kind of cool, especially when you read about it with a good teacher teaching you, you know, in a, in a science class or in a history class, right? But the reality is, look at these things they discovered. These things are really cool. I think anybody could share this stuff with you and you'd find it interesting. So I found that really cool. Both of these stories, as a matter of fact, all three of these stories are from our friends at the Good News Network and I urge you to check them all out. Now, just like I said, take a look at this mummy with a golden tongue and listen to me babble to you a little bit about the names of these cities that are very hard to pronounce and hopefully you'll like this story too. So I don't know if you guys watched my little show that I put up last night on loneliness, but it's really weird because we live in a world where some people feel lonely not when they're actually alone, but some people feel their loneliness when they're actually a among other people. Sometimes other people talk about things that have very little interest to us. Sometimes people talk about things that literally irritate us, right? If you're not into politics, the last thing you want to hear when you're in a room full of people is about politics, right? If you're not really into sports like me and some of the other venters, then whenever you hear sports or names of athletes, it might go over your head and you might lose interest pretty quick. But the reality is sometimes we feel lonely because we literally are alone. And if you're going through a breakup or a divorce or a situation where your last child has finally moved out of the house, it can be really difficult for people to deal with such things. This is where it's really good to kind of try 
to get out of your comfort zone by simply going on a couple of walks. What you'll soon find is that you're actually pretty fun to hang out with. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, well, wait a minute, Jesse. I've never had any troubles hanging out with myself. The reason is, is because you're a pretty decent person and you're gonna find some new friends and you're gonna find some new attachments in this world. It might not happen overnight. You might feel a little low on your confidence right now, but you wanna know something that I'm impressed by? I've never met you, but I know that you wanna do a little self-improvement. And whenever you find a human being that's trying to better themselves, that's the type of person that I would wanna connect with. How about you? So in other words, if you're out on a walk one day and you see one of your neighbors walking too, more than likely that neighbor has at least a couple things in common with you. Number one, they might be overweight. So they know what it's like to be craving sweets and craving certain junk foods. And they know deep down they need to lessen their, their impact on eating those, right? They need to stop eating that stuff. Well, that's the type of person that if you became a friend and decided that you wanted to go out to eat you know, somewhere, you guys could probably go to some place that's healthier. Whereas if you're going to your normal eating spots with your normal friends, you might find yourself being tempted to eat something that's not so healthy. Number two, when you walk around and you meet your neighbors and stuff, there is a chance you could be meeting your next best friend. But no matter what, it's always good to at least know your neighbors. Number three, you know your neighbors, you know that they might be going through the same thing you are when it comes to your health. But right now, you're in a sad state of mind. You feel lonely. So one of the things that we have to do is sometimes we don't think of ourselves in that high of a regard. But if you go on a walk, you'll pretty soon come down to earth. If you're, if you're dealing with issues of disliking yourself, a lot of times that subsides after you're walking for a couple days or a couple weeks. The reality is you don't wanna dislike yourself. If you dislike yourself, I think it sends signals to the brain and the mind that you don't wanna be friendly with other people. So what you want to do is you want to learn how to take care of yourself, how to make improvements to both your heart, mind, soul, and body, right? But you also want to learn how to forgive yourself. Be a gentle soul. Be somebody that people are naturally attracted to, not necessarily looks-wise or relationship-wise, but you want to be that person that when you enter a room, people are glad that you entered. And the best way to do that is to pep yourself up. And when you're on a walk, no matter how sad or lonely you feel, it feels a lot better than moping on your couch all by yourself staring at that TV or that phone screen. Remember, there's something debilitating about that phone screen. You know, in the early 2000s, 30% of Americans were considered obese. Now, over the last 25 years, 40% of us are obese. That's an extra 10%. That means somewhere in the last 25 years, 33 million of us have become obese who might not normally have become obese. Why is that? How is that? Well, I'll tell you why that is. It's your cell phone. That's what happened over the last 25 years. Your cell phone has made it where everybody, instead of reaching out to their best friend Becky or their best friend Tony, they reach out for their cell phone and they don't bother with Becky or Tony. I'm telling you, we live in a world where the more social media we have, the less social we are. So what you wanna do is put your phone down, go outside, get some sunshine. Is it hot? Yeah, but wherever I live, it's probably gonna be hotter than wherever you live. So if I can get out here and do it, you can too, okay? So let's put the excuses away Let's get your shoes on and let's walk our way to a new, improved, and better you. What if we could get you to the point over the next week, or not week, excuse me, what if we can get you to the point where over the next couple of months, we could get you to the point where you feel youthful and you feel better than you have in a long time? Well, that's going to be the type of person that when they go out, they can meet new friends. When they go out, they can meet somebody new in their life. Nobody's going to want to be around you if you're depressed, blue, and not yourself. So the first thing we have to do is we have to work on the man or woman in the mirror. 
And one of the best ways to do that is to ponder certain things in our life. Have I been making good decisions or do I tend to make bad decisions? When I help others, is it always a case of no good deed goes unpunished? Because, you know, if every time you help Bob or Cindy or Lucy Lou, if every time you do that, it makes your life miserable, well, then maybe we need to take a step back. We don't always need to be captain save a friend, right? Take a step back from other people's problems because for the first time in a long time, you might have to focus on your own problems. One of the things that I was doing today, and I did it a little bit last week as well, is I've been trying to reorganize and clean certain rooms in my home. Because I believe when you have clutter in the house, it leads to negativity and clutter within the mind. You might be in that same situation. So why don't you do this while you're on your walk? Picture your home in all its three-dimensional glory. Picture your living room, picture your den, picture that spare bedroom. If there's a mess in there, go and clean it up. Get organized. Let's make it where if somebody new comes and visits you, you don't have to say, excuse the house, it's a mess, I have, I've been busy. No, you always keep your house impeccably clean. Because remember, that's the first thing people see of you. Remember what I tell you guys constantly. Because I live in Arizona, I'm so used to everybody having rock or desert landscaping. I, I look at pictures of you guys in Illinois and Georgia and different states and I see how your backyard looks literally like it's the forest. It's got so many green areas and I'm jealous. So in my house I've got literally like fences that are just bushes that I have growing next to each other and we've been doing this for decades because we want a fence to grow up but we want it to be a fence of bushes. Does that make sense? And we want the wall to look like it's one giant bougainvillea bush. Well, you know, that takes time. That takes a plan. And in your house, you might not be thinking that you want to have the same things I do, but you might be thinking, darn it, I want to clean up this place. And if you do, I promise you, it'll be a good move. Another thing that you might want to do is take a look at your wardrobe. If you've been married the last 10 or 15 years, you might have a wardrobe that looks great for the year 2005 but it might not look so good nowadays. I mean, you're going on a walk to improve your body. Why don't you have a fun little walk at the mall where you can take a look at clothes that you're not gonna buy just yet, but maybe some styles that you wanna fit into, and that can be an upcoming goal for us to hit. Look, my thinking is you wanna do one of two things in life. You either wanna make goals to move forward, up and beyond, or you wanna to try to make goals that at least keep you where you are, right? If you're in your mid-60s or your mid-70s and you feel relatively healthy, you might not need to make a millionaire you know, goal and game plan, right? It might be best for you just to try to maintain your health. Well, let's come up with a plan to do that. How about this plan? How about we start every day with a half hour walk together? How about every day at lunch we at least contemplate the idea of taking a walk and in the evening if it's not too hot outside, how about we take another walk? Why? Because this will give us a solid game plan to really lose a lot of weight in 90 days. You know, look, if you're 65, I don't think you want to wait 10 years to lose 30 pounds. Let's see if we can lose it here in the next 10 to 12 weeks. Now that sounds like a winning, a winning game plan, doesn't it? So let's take it a step further. If we're going to walk once, twice, maybe three times a day, what we need to do is we need to try to fuel ourselves Every time I'm about to tell you guys something incredible, the battery dies. What does that mean, Jesse? That means that in life, whenever we're about to turn a corner, whenever we're about to make some headway, something happens and inevitably it's gonna make you wanna quit. Sometimes you'll even think it's God's way of telling you to go ahead and quit, this isn't for you. Guys, you cannot afford to do that with your walk, okay? What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to prepare. Right now, you're gung-ho, you're on a walk, you're ready to change your life. But let me give you a scenario. It's 30 days from now, you think you're gung-ho, you step on the scale, and instead of saying 199 like you're hoping, it still says 204, and last week it said 203, what the F, right? 
This is bullshit, Jesse. This shit doesn't work. But it does work, okay? Just because the battery's dead today doesn't mean that you can't go ahead and recharge it, okay? Just because you're feeling like crap today doesn't mean that your battery can't be recharged and it's back to the lab again, okay? Maybe you've been walking with me for half hour for 30 days in a row and you really wanted to see that scale go down. Okay, well it went up or it stayed the same or it didn't go down enough. What are we gonna do about it? Are we gonna complain and quit or are we gonna come to the reality that quitting is just not an option because it's really not. It's your health we're talking about here. So what I propose is that we use Kaizen, that old Japanese philosophy of baby steps that we've come to know and love, right? To know and love. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing what Jesse suggests because maybe there's a, a method to his madness. Every day you go to lunch at noon and you don't have to clock back in till 12.30 but every day you finish your lunch at 12.15, at we're gonna start taking that extra 15 minute walk at lunch, especially now that the weather's starting to cool down. Don't tell anybody in Arizona I said that because it's getting hotter for some reason, okay? When you get home and it's the early evening and there's shadows everywhere, or not shadows, excuse me, shade everywhere, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of that shade and we're gonna take a second or a third walk for the day. And when you get home for your walk, quit rewarding yourself with a darn soda pop. Drink a glass of ice water, that's the real reward. Sometimes we want the scale to do something magical, but wouldn't it be, bunch of, wouldn't it be a bunch of bullshit if every time you drank a Coke, you were rewarded with weight loss? Think about it, that's what you're asking the scale to do. You're drinking a Coke every day, asking the scale to lower the scale for you. It doesn't work like that. We have to make a plan. How about this plan? We're gonna go from three Cokes a day down to two, but we're not just gonna say that we're gonna do it, we're gonna actually do it. So you have your morning Coke, you have your lunch Coke, and you have your dinner Coke, Helen. Tell me which Coke you're gonna get rid of put it in the comments, and by golly, for the next month or two, let's actually do what we say we're gonna do. And then at the end of the evening, when somebody says, hey, do you want this last piece of cake? Say, no, honey, you take it. You've been taking that and accepting that last piece of cake for your whole life. It's the reason that you wanna lose weight now. And you just got a divorce, you just got separated, you feel lonely as heck. Put on your shoes, go for a walk, become the best person you can. Let's get your confidence from down here to up here so that when you're ready to go meet somebody, you're ready to show them, you're, you're ready to put your best foot forward. Nobody wants to date a miserable, you know, a miserable person. Nobody wants to date a negative Nancy. You gotta be upbeat, you gotta be positive. One of the things that helps me stay positive 95% of the time is my walks. What, de what gets me down and blue and depressed is that I can't seem to talk enough of you overweight people into believing in yourself enough to walk with us. You know, how many times have you guys heard this in your life? Big people will say, I feel so alone. I feel like, you know, I'm the only one dealing with this problem. No, there's, everybody's dealing with the same problem, but you're choosing to be alone. Join the Venters. We get together every day and we walk every single day together. This is what you want to do. The phone is leading you to believe that there's a YouTube video out there that's going to change your life. You have found it. I'm Jesse. I'm that guy. So get your shoes on, get to walking, quit being one of these people that's thinking about doing it. And I know right now there are people staring at this video that are thinking about doing it. Quit thinking and actually do. What did Yoda say? There is no try, there is do or don't do or whatever. Go with Yoda's advice, just do it. My goodness. Remember, you're lucky that I'm not king because if I were king, I would literally force you to exercise. 
and everyone would say, God, this king is the cruelest son of a bitch. But you want to know what? Within two years, everybody would love this king because he would eliminate obesity. What we really need is for you to force yourself to start walking. You will end up loving it. You just don't know it yet. I don't know why as a country we are so okay with mediocrity. We are so okay with quitting things. I think we're all tired of that shit, aren't we? Don't listen to what the experts are saying. You probably don't need a medication. Do some people legit need weight loss medication? Yes. Some people are 400 pounds and about to die. Of course they need to do something. But what's your issue, Helen? You're only 203. You're only 204. Heck, a year or two ago, you were only 185. Quit eating the cheesecake and grab some shoes. That's the difference. You look at Jesse and you say, hey, there's a nice looking uh, individual that's you know just a nice guy. Nice guy, Jesse. Bullshit, if I was God, I would force you. You would not like me as much. But again, sometimes we think that God throws these tribulations and these hoops at us and it makes you wonder why there's even Christians out there or believers out there because it's not like our God listens to our prayers and answers them. But sometimes he does. I'm telling you, I can help you live longer, but you have to listen to the words and you have to apply some actions to them. This is not a nice guy. If I literally had my way, I would force you. And I would throw all the people that are unwilling, I would throw them off a cliff. Let's get rid of them. It's a disease that they're spreading. They shouldn't give birth. Okay, I don't feel that way exactly. But I want you guys to get stronger. I want you guys to get better. And I want you guys to quit thinking about doing stuff and actually do it. Golly, if I don't have the strength in the morning to do a video, guilt alone makes me go out and do it in the evening because I don't, want, I don't like the idea of a big person being there to watch my video and it not being there. You know, sometimes we need a little extra outside motivation. Sometimes we need a little guilt. So here's the guilt for you. You're either gonna start doing it and you're gonna be there for your family and friends as it, moving forward, or you're gonna leave the planet and leave them all alone. So let's do this. Have a great day, I'll see you tomorrow.